Hello, welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast. My name is Dallas, and I have loved Dwayne Johnson since I was a wee little lad. I'm Colin, and I feel like he's probably the biggest success story of someone who, like, wasn't an actor deciding to go into acting and making it work. One of them. And Yeah. Interesting. And I'm Demi, and you guys are probably wondering where the House of the Dragons review is. At this point, I have not seen the episode, so y'all have to wait next week. Welcome to another episode of the Creative Differences Podcast, your one-stop shop for movie reviews, fancast Fridays, Starbuck Thursdays, and a number of other pop culture-related items. Today, we will be reviewing Black Adam and The School for Good and Evil. Rest assured, Demi will watch the incest show. Stop it! <laughs> Before we get into the episode, please like, share, subscribe, download, five stars, all the things. We need the algorithm to see us. We need it. It's, it's just like looking right over us. We help. <laughs> oh, please. I think we're going to start real quick with the School for Good and Evil. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Just so I can try and run through this, hopefully in five minutes or less. You can do it, I believe in you. I'm going to try. I've said this before and I never succeed. Anyway, School for Good and Evil is directed by Paul Feig. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. And it's written it by is, David okay. McGee and Paul Feig. It's based on a novel by... I. Don't know how to pronounce this man's name. I'm sorry if I butcher it. Somain Chinani. And it stars Sophia Ann Caruso, Sophia Wiley, Charlize Theron, Kerry Washington, Lawrence Fishburne, and Kit Young. IMDb Separate is best friends Sophie and Agatha find themselves on opposing sides of an epic battle when they're swept away into an enchanted school where aspiring heroes and villains are trained to protect the balance between good and evil. I need a second. So they said, we're going to cast Sophia and Sophia, and mm-hmm. one of them is going to play Sophie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stop. They did that. <laughs> they did, they that. did also, that. Also, their Sophias are spelled different ways. Yeah. It's F and NPA. Well, that's good. Yeah. I would, because if you're putting better. like signs on stuff, it's easier. But... but also, I don't know how you reference which one when you need them on set. I guess by character name? Or by last name? Black one, white one? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Black Sophie. Come here. Don't do that. Anyway. Yeah, I had fun. I wouldn't mind a sequel. It feels like there is way too much plot for its runtime, which is insane because this movie is almost two and a half hours. Yes, we realized that the night that we were going to start it like at 930. And we were like, oh, right. no. no, not doing that. Because of the amount of plot that there is, mm-hmm. the story is only really able to go to like the surface level of mm. it. So like we're we're running pretty at a pretty breakneck pace to get places and i feel like we don't really get into the depth of some of these characters or some of the themes that this is trying to display demonstrate whatever word you want to use here (laughs) for instance the prince that agatha is supposed to have a well both girls are trying to have a relationship with in a sense his character arc is that he's supposed to go from seeing the world in black and white as like heroes and villains and that's it to seeing that there are shades of gray in there okay and every time he's supposed to learn something new, it's not because we have seen him learn it. It's because he says that I have changed and I now see it. Oh, okay. Because we don't really have time to yeah. show. Yeah, show, don't show. You know the rule. Yeah, there's a lot of telling and not showing in this movie, which I think is the main downfall First thing they teach you it. in uh, film school. Absolutely. First thing. Tell, don't show. However, I did enjoy the actors in this movie, which was the main reason I watched it. I really liked all of the actors in it. I enjoyed their performances. Sophia Wiley and Sophia and Caruso are really good as new as the newcomers on the scene, both upcoming actresses, and I really do believe their characters are good friends as much as the movie allows you to. I'm already a really big fan of Sophia Wiley based off of her work on High School Musical, the musical, the series. Do you like her because she looks like Journey Smollett? She does. So here's the thing. I didn't realize <laughs> she looked like Journey Smollett until I saw somebody fan cast her as a young Black Canary. I saw that post. And I was like, what? That's such a good idea. I think I said when we covered the trailer, if we covered it on mic, I said it looks like they did de-aging on Journey. I was like, why would they do that, though? What purpose would it serve? It never occurred to me until until recently. At first glance, I was like, Journey? It's not her. It's not her. They look very they similar. Look very Somebody alike. throw them in a movie together right. immediately because, wow, they do look a lot alike. Mm-hmm. Then also now I want her to play younger Black Canary in in we just did a, a the fan cast last week we did so I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking all the Ted Grant scenes flashbacks right. with Sophia Wiley playing younger Black Canary it's perfect let's do it Warner Brothers got a check let's go also she's a dancer so she would probably pick up oh, nice. on the stunt choreography real real well True. um yeah I'm a fan of hers already she's a very talented young actress dancer singer so. I look forward to seeing her career continue to thrive. If they continue to make these movies, I will continue to watch them in hopes that her career will continue to thrive. Charlize Theron is giving hella Dom vibes as a villainous teacher. Isn't she always? 
No, this one is a little bit more <laughs> than usual. Wow, okay. I mean, she's like pushing people with a cane or something like or like an umbrella. I don't know. She's she yeah, it's a lot. Something phallic. Exactly. I don't know what You good Colin? <laughs> no. No. It's I'm not, not my fault they put it in the movie. Uh Carrie Washington is wonderful and beautifully energetic in this movie. Nice. And I kinda wish that there had been more of her characters and Agatha's character like their relationship and mm. their dynamic together because I feel like there's not enough of it. The same with actually Charlize Theron's character and Sophia and Caruso's character as well. And then the visuals for me are probably the best part. I think it's a really interesting looking fantasy film because Paul Feig decided to take inspiration from other places that fantasy movies usually don't draw from. Okay. So I really thought that some of the concepts were really interesting and the look of certain costumes or the looks of certain creatures were very interesting and somewhat unique because they drew from different inspirational sources so i liked his vision for the world overall the movie's fine all right it's a netflix movie you want to just chill out for two and a half hours netflix and chill go for it that's what that means no i'm not gonna go into that yeah it's fine go ahead let's move forward i'm curious black adam okay what are you gonna go into i'll tell you guys off mic (laughs) okay black adam i know him Directed by Jama Koya Sarah. We finally learned how to pronounce his last his name, guys. Like yep. his full name. <laughs> Probably still did it wrong. He directed Orphan, The Shallows, and Jungle Cruise. Been and working for a while. Uh, House of Wax, I believe. Yes, he started with House of Wax. I usually just pick three. That's the Paris mm. Hilton movie, right? I mean, yeah, she's in it. I don't know if it's the Paris Hilton. Movie. I think Paris Hilton <laughs> because of some behind the scenes stuff that happened on that film. Continue. Got it. Okay. What were they doing with that wax? Right. <laughs> Uh, it's written by Adam, oh, man, Sitkiel. Oh, no. It's my best guess. We got the uh, director's name correct. We can't get the, the writers. It's one or the other. Rory Haynes and Sohrab Noshirvani. Adam has a Wikipedia, so we're going with him. He wrote Due Date, Rampage, and Scoob. So, you know, he's been working. The movie stars Dwayne Johnson, Aldous Hodge, Noah Centineo, Sarah Shahi, uh, Marwan Kanzani, Quintessa Swindell, and Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. It's based on the DC Comics character of the same name. And the IMDb summary states, 5,000 years, no, nearly 5,000 years after he was bestowed with the almighty powers of the Egyptian gods and imprisoned just as quickly, Black Adam is freed from his earthly tomb, ready to unleash his unique form of justice on the modern world. The DC power hierarchy is about to change something, something, something. Yeah, hierarchy of power, I believe is what he says. Yep. Colin, you finally saw a movie with us. What did you think? Yo, Colin, the audience, hold on. It's been so long since we did a review and Colin has like seen the thing we're reviewing. Honk for Jesus. Save Honk for Jesus soul. was the last one. I think that was in August or September. Maybe early, early September. September. Maybe. But yeah, we've done. We've been doing this every week. <laughs> and Colin's just here for the vibes. Yeah. But now he's seen it. Take it away. Half Black Adam. OK, so here's the thing with most superhero movies and superhero content. Mm-hmm. I usually tend to look at them with there's a specific quote that I'm only going to take a couple lines from because the rest of it is mean. Uh, from Macbeth, which is full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Oh, that's what that's from? Yes. I've heard of that. It's the tomorrow and tomorrow. And... It, the first part is tale told by an idiot, and I don't think that's fair. Oh, that is me. Um, that's why I don't use that. But yeah. this movie is it's full of loud. sound and fury, signifying nothing, like, exemplified. It's, we're going to fight some people, and then we're going to fight some other people, and then we're going to fight some other people. But who are you? What do you want? What are you going to do now? I mean, my question is kind of that for everybody in this movie, because like it brings up characters who have known each other for a while, but I've never seen. But then there are also new characters, but then they have a name for their team, even though the team hasn't existed or it has. I like to me, it is a perfectly fine. You know, you want to watch some superhero action. Mm -hmm. That's great. I don't think it goes any deeper than that. Mm. I don't know if it was supposed to, but I wish it did. (laughs) Dallas, what do you think? I think it is fine. I wouldn't go as far as to say I dislike it, but I also don't know if I'd go as far as to say I like it. You were whelmed? Um, I was whelmed. Yes, I'm very whelmed. Thank you, Colin. Mm-hmm. Good reference. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very, very applicable. Off mic, we, <laughs> we came up with a scale. Oh, God. Oh, yep. The cinema to clown work spectrum. Uh-huh. At the bottom, you have Call Yaya. We got some clown work on our hands. At the top, it's Call Scorsese. We got a cinema on our hands. Or in my case, I'm usually going to say call insert black director here. We got a cinema on our hands. Or Guillermo del Toro, like you did that one time. Yes, it depends on the thing, like Mm. what it applies to, who would be the cinema keeper for that. And then in the middle, it's call Harry Styles. We got a movie on our hands (laughs) because, you know, 
my favorite thing about the movie is like it feels like a like a movie you know you, you kind of the reason why you go to watch something on the big screen yeah call harry styles we got a movie on our hands <laughs> it's not that bad it's not that good that's my initial thought to me what's your initial thought copy and paste most of what i just said about the school for good and evil and put it here um interesting yeah <laughs> it's fine yeah it's like you said i don't think it's good i don't really think it's bad either it's just there are things that i like and love about this movie and there are things that i'm just like i'm whelmed nothing's really working for me here mm -hmm. um i think the action sequences are amazing they are extremely well done yeah fantastic the jsa are my favorite part of this movie mm-hmm and that's great for me because the JSA was what I was most excited for about this movie. So I'm glad that I like them because yeah. <laughs> it would have been really disappointing if I didn't. But yeah, the story is fine. It's flat. I feel like the writing is flat. I felt that a lot, a lot of the time there was writing that I felt either was falling flat for me or wasn't falling flat for me just because the actors were elevating it. They're with their elevating. Performance. Aldous Hodge. He elevating. power lifting. <laughs> the dialogue in this movie. So it's Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. I really like the interaction with those two characters. And I'm not saying that it's like bad writing. It's not. It's not even bad writing. It's yeah, just. Yeah. It's just like some of the. A lot of the dialogue with the actors that I didn't come to see. Like, you know, the main woman and her son. I actually really like Sarah Shahi in this movie. I like her character. I like, you know, the revolutionary and all that stuff. But just a lot of that kind of fell flat for me. Yeah. But then you have Aldous Hodge and he's just doing his thing. <laughs> it works much better. For Dwayne Johnson. He is one of my favorite people. He's great. Uh, one thing I said to Colin after this movie finished was that him being cast as Black Adam for me is a double-edged sword. Because on one hand, you need someone physically imposing. Dwayne Johnson is the perfect man. He is. But also, he's so charming and charismatic that I feel like playing a character like this almost feels like a waste. He's because because this character is not charming. He doesn't get to do any of that because that's not what that character is, and it's just there are characters in the DC universe that I think would be so much fun to watch him play. If he could play Lobo and ride him on a motorcycle, that would be my dream. But you know, he's big lightning nigga, which is cool. Made I, for some great action. I think it's really interesting because his character in the Fast and Furious movies is also a very like straight, stern character, mm -hmm. but he still has that charisma. And that yeah, charm. Because he can tell Jason Statham, I will beat you like a Cherokee drum. Yes. And all the dumb jokes they make in Hobbs and Shaw, like he gets to do that. Black Adam doesn't get to do that. And he has this moments of levity because, you know, the movie's pretty fun. It has its, it has its I think the movie is legitimately a lot of fun yeah. if you're not looking for, like, anything deep. Yeah, it's a fun time. It's just, I've had a fun time lots of times, and I need something else to make the movie stand out. It also feels like, how would I say it? You need more than a fun time. DC needs more than a fun time. <laughs> DC needs something. The crazy thing is DC's actually been doing a decent job as of recent years. I don't know why people are trying to downplay the fact that like Shazam was really good. The Batman, I mean, the Batman's not in the DCEU, but the Batman was really good. DC. Joker was really good. Birds of Prey did really well as well, like critically, and people really liked it. Like. Yeah. They've been doing pretty well the last few years. Yeah, I never really get into the whole like, oh, DC's flopping, DC's struggling, blah, blah, blah. I think the thing discourse. is, I think the reason that's still around is because there's the perception that they want to be in the public consciousness the way that Marvel is. Mm. You and have to work there. for that? It's just, <laughs> like, it's not a good compare. Like, it's, it should be a good comparison because Marvel and DC, those are the top dogs when it comes to comic books. So... You think of their movie universes and you would think, oh, yeah, also an app comparison. But it's just like we ain't there yet. fam. It's not the same. <laughs> and I get why people look at the MCU and everything it's done. And then they look at DCEU and it's like, wah, wah. but I personally enjoy a good amount of DC movies. So I, I don't enjoy really... at least half of them. Yeah, there are more that I like than there are that I don't. So sure. it's just like a lot of people, a DC movie comes out and they're like, oh, how good could it be? It's DC. And it's like. Some of these are I'm actually really guy. good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that guy. Yeah. Yeah, it had, it had some, some really good moments. Like we said, Dr. Fate was great. The Justice Society, I enjoyed. I enjoyed them a lot to the point where I was like, I want you guys to have your own movies because I do want to actually go into further depth with you guys. I want to see yeah. more of this Hawkman. I would not say that I am a Hawkman fan. 
Um, no, most people aren't. Yeah. But I legitimately came out of this movie and was like, I really want a Hawkman movie. I want to see what him and Hawk Girl would be like in a film together. I want to see Dr. Fate more. I really liked this iteration of Kent Nelson and would like to see more of the Fate lore and the Agent of Order yeah, thing. Yeah, I want more of that. Um, as well as more of Hawkman's um, lore, because that's not mentioned at all in this movie. It's hinted at, but it is not mentioned. Okay. And then also I thought that um, Noah Centineo and Quintessa Swindell had really good chemistry as Adam Smasher. And, yeah. Um, yeah, they did. And why can I not think of her hero? Cyclone. Name? Cyclone. Cyclone. I knew I was like, it's not tornado. Stop it. <laughs> like I thought that they were very charming and they had a lot of chemistry together as those mm-hmm. two characters. And I was like, I would love to see more of you guys too. You guys are yeah. really, really good. I think a lot of what the movie gives me that I do like, it's there's not enough. There's of. potential there, mm-hmm. but I didn't get it. I really like Dr. Fate and all of the animated stuff. He's fantastic. The video games, he's really cool. But we've gotten so much Dr. Strange content and yeah. seen so many things that you can do with superhero magic. And Dr. Fate doesn't really do any of that. See, that's the thing is like, for me, you know, I know the, the Dr. Fate has the whole like, the helmet kind of possesses you and stuff because of who I know and what you've told me. Mm-hmm. But when I didn't, if I didn't know that, like when he first showed up, I was like, oh, okay, he's Dr. Strange, but he has a different look. Yeah, he's got a cool helmet. Yeah. I do think that the visuals on this movie are pretty freaking good. I oh, really yeah. like the costumes. Like, I love Hawkman's costume. I love Dr. Fate's costume. Uh, Black Adam also has a very good costume. I love, yeah, the visuals there of Black Adam are dope. Is, yeah, I like all the costumes. Actually, I really enjoyed all of them. I thought that uh, Cyclones looks really cool whenever she's using her abilities. I like the visual display of her abilities. Mm-hmm. I thought it was very interesting. There is one costume that I love more than all the rest. <laughs> yeah that makes sense that would be a spoiler though so i'm not gonna do that <laughs> i thought the costumes were really good i thought the action sequences were really well done i did like the detail of black adam never really walking too often he's usually just gliding above the ground There's which like, i think is great yeah and then also that plays to a dramatic effect when he does actually decide to walk at one point in mm-hmm. the movie like, there are definitely, like, some moments where I'm like, ooh, this is a good decision. This is a great direct- yeah. <laughs> directorial decision. And this is great. And this is great. And then there are other times where I'm like, yeah, this is just, it's fine. I'm having a good time, mm-hmm. but I'm not thinking about this too much. Yeah. And I feel like, in fairness, I don't know how much I should criticize the movie because I went in for a fun time. And that's pretty much what I got. But I would like more than a fun time, as we mentioned earlier. Yeah. And I think for me, it's like I said, after we watched the movie is my version of superhero fatigue is just I've seen so many dope things with superheroes in them. So then when I see something that is kind of just fun, it's like, well, this movie was really fun and said a bunch of stuff. And this movie was really fun and did something new with this genre and blah, 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 blah. So when you just kind of have some dope action, which it really does, because the intro of Black Adam, when he first shows up. Oh, my God, that's that, good. Call Scorsese, we got cinema on our hands. Although, that was amazing. Although I will say I was not a fan of them using like um, actual songs in the, whenever they would yeah, do like pop songs in it. Those felt really huh. incongruous. Yeah, I always like that if I like the song that they're using. I think it could have worked. It just didn't for me in this movie. Yeah, for me, I think the reason it doesn't work is because Black Adam, as far as I understand him, is not having fun. <laughs> So when you home. play <laughs> this like fun upbeat pop song, like if the person doing the murdering were having fun, I'd be like, yeah, this works. But like Paint It Black, he would not know what that is no. if it were actually playing. And I don't know that he would even appreciate it because he's not having fun. He's just killing people who are trying to kill him. And so I feel like it doesn't match with the tone of the movie at the moment that it's playing. Hmm. To me, Paint It Black, like what's that supposed to do? It's supposed to like, get the audience hyped up and get the audience into it. I'm not really into this because it's just murder. Well, you're not really you're into not it. You're not the target audience. I mean, I guess, but... Like, I... I liked that scene a lot. I thought it was really I well done. I thought that worked. And, like, I don't think about it the way you do because I don't think of it as for the characters because it's not diegetic. They don't even hear it. It's for us. So, like, they pick these songs. Like, what song would the audience get hyped to hear while Dwayne Johnson is stomping people to death? <laughs> Yeah, whatever song you pick, if it works, it works. I was having fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, there are things about this that worked for me. Like mm-hmm. I said, the JSA. I yeah. want more of the JSA. Action sequences are fantastic. I thought the actors are all really, really good. But like, I think the JSA just stands out for me above all the rest. And I think it's mostly because of their dynamic as a team anyway. See, that's okay. interesting. It's a lot of fun. Because I feel like half of them stand out to me. Cyclone and Adam Smasher just didn't have enough 
But their dynamic mm. within that group is really fun to me. That's like true. Adam yeah. Smasher dealing with Hawkman every single time is hilarious. I like to that. Me. I like Adam Smasher as the you know comedic relief. He felt very, very Barry Allen to me. He's a younger guy. He's kind of like out of his depth a bit. Is uh, is Barry Allen who they who must not be named is playing? Yes. Yes. Okay. So like I agree somewhat with Colin with like they weren't given enough screen time. Yeah. For especially cyclone and um adam smasher but i do think that they had enough charm and charisma that i was like i want to see more of you because this was mm-hmm. not enough yeah mm-hmm. i would definitely be cool to see more of them also the last thing i want to say i know we're over time we are yeah we're <laughs> over time but you know is that uh, a conversation we had off mic was that i give them more credit in the depth department than you guys do only because I'm not going to say they didn't try. They tried. Yeah, for that's sure. the thing. Like, I feel like... This is definitely an anti-colonialism movie. Yes. For sure. Ooh, and for see, me... Oh, what's ooh, up? that's the thing, though. I don't know when in timeline this is happening. <laughs> okay. But we recently watched what I would argue is another anti-colonialism superhero movie. Okay. That gets into it so much better than this one But that's does. what I mean about the depth thing. I'm like, this yeah. movie is about that, but it doesn't dive as deep as say the movie that you are referencing at this very moment in yes. time mm-hmm. but it is mentioned a lot mm-hmm. yeah and also i think that that movie <laughs> is like, better than most yeah, like a curse what we're not saying we watched black panther at some point yeah. <laughs> black panther wants that to be more part of its story mm, like okay. killmonger's thing well it's it's very deeply tied to that i think my thing about that though is it feels like is that part of this story? Because his whole thing is he's supposed to be Kondok's champion. So if he's representing the nation, mm-hmm. shouldn't that be a bigger part of the story? And he has a whole line later on in the film where he's like, not your child, not your country. You don't get to make these decisions. It's supposed to be a huge part of the story. Right. But also, kind of feels like it's not as big a part as it should be. Mm-hmm. But all of his actions are JSA. You guys are America. You're coming right. into this country that's yeah, not your sure. business. I'm protecting them from you as well as Intergang. Mm. So that is part of the story. Mm, it's okay. very, like... It's very it's surface not, level, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, they don't really dive into it the way mm-hmm. that Black Panther does. But I do like that that is part of the story. I do like that it's not just, I came back, this is my home, you guys get out. Mm. I like that they did Intergang. I like that the... What is that mom's name? Adriana. Adriana, thank you. I like that Adriana's whole thing is like, you know, we've been fighting, we need a champion, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So you can get the anti-hero, especially with the kid, through his eyes. Black Adam is the hero. Yeah. Right. Because he's protecting them. And I like that because a lot of times JSA would just come in like, we're the good guys, pew, pew, pew. But he's like, okay. yo, this is not your... While we're on this topic, mm-hmm. yes, I did like that. Mm-hmm. I love that the JSA does come in and I like that they found a way in story for the JSA to, even though they are the heroes, to not be the heroes in the eyes of some of these characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I liked, I liked the positioning of these characters and mm-hmm. the way that they frame them. Yeah. I think I just wish that the movie had been able to dive deeper into those themes and, and do more than just tell us. Like, we were talking about tell, don't show. <laughs> right. Tell, not, don't show. That's kind of mm-hmm. how I felt about this movie. It was like, there's mm-hmm. a lot of you telling me these things. Right. And I'm sh- get, being shown a lot of action. Mm-hmm. But I'm not being shown a lot of like the things that you are telling me mm, which is what i would have liked but yeah it's so hard I did like that element of the movie it's hard doing uh non-spoiler reviews and trying to like <laughs> trying to explain here's how this execution didn't work for me when i can't mm. really pull up sources and cite some things right. <laughs> that's the thing is like we haven't even really talked that much about the back half of the movie no no but you know yeah we don't need to shout out to the woman who plays Amelia Harcourt. I can't think of the actress's name right now, but I was so excited to see her on the on screen for that. Oh. The uh, hot one from Peacemaker. Yes. Jennifer I want to say it's Jennifer Holland. Holland? I want to say Yes, Jennifer Holland. Yes, okay. Yeah. I, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I tough. knew she was in the movie, but like I had forgotten and so I got really excited when she came on screen. I didn't even know she was in. I was like, "Hey." But cool. Yeah, that's Black Adam. Yeah. Fun time. Kind of. It well, was fun time. Yes. It's fun. Yeah. Just don't yeah. expect anything to like it's a, it's a spectacle is what it is. It okay. is a giant spectacle. Yeah, and it's fun. Yeah, the power dynamic of the DC universe changes or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying this is phase one of the DCEU, so. I'm sorry, wait, what? Yeah. What? What does that mean? Ten that's, years in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, that's a long that, ass that's phase. That's what The Rock said. The Rock said this is the beginning of phase one. It can't be the beginning of phase one. It's the beginning of phase one. Wait, we'll they, get what into were the first, first ten years? I have no idea. 
but then but, we'll we, but they're using the same yeah, the practice run. waller from other movies yes. past well, yeah, yeah she was in the practice do that those was now get erased pre-season. that was preseason Colin. you have the same team in preseason you know it's used in the same way but it's the same i don't team. don't talk to me about sports football i can't i can't do it <laughs> sports ball rehearsal anyway. Like before you do the show, guys, theater? we should move on. I'm trying to help him. Yeah, there's, it's, it's too late. I appreciate it. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> beta test. Yeah. You know computers and stuff. Okay. Video yeah. games. Beta test. No, this, this was like the alpha. There was too much broken there. Anyway, <laughs> ten minute takes with Colin. One day we will go back to actually doing on what you've been watching. But here's what I've been watching. We have opinions. For ten minutes. I watched. I'm just gonna call it the white people's champion. Uh, Friends. Oh, oh it's like the white people's champion. Yes. It hey, is that. I mean, it, Friends is great. To me, I watched the first ten minutes of Friends. Okay. What is the first? I haven't 10 seen the first ten of minutes of Friends. Friends. Okay, in like 10 so years. the first ten minutes of oh, Friends. It's Rachel coming back right, uh, from. Is it mate. that? Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, what? <laughs> um, did you it, watch it? Rachel coming yeah. into Central Park with the wedding dress on. I think. Yes, it is. Uh, okay, they're all sitting around and saying like, ah, rah, rah, "We're people. We make jokes." And then mm. yep. Rachel comes in in her wedding dress and is like, "I didn't want to marry this guy because he's ugly." Yeah, that's actually legit. Yeah. It's. I mean, she also says she doesn't love him, but honestly, it's mostly about the fact that he's ugly and she's not attracted. I to him. I think the first episode she only says that it's because he, he's ugly, but as we go further along in the series, it's definitely more than that. <laughs> okay, that's good. How do you get too engaged? My. And- wedding day bruh like she a lot of realizes don't... after she's already called off the wedding that quote unquote he looks like mr potato head it's like girl if you really were that repulsed by his appearance anyway you're just being shallow but he's um, a dentist <laughs> aka a doctor and you know women are looking for doc- it was the 90s guys they make money colin oh, you gotta think of, take your mind Christ. take your mind back to the 90s sitcoms what about like basic liking television people for NBC, I Who think it was. Are. It was NBC. Yeah, NBC, 90s television. He's a doctor. Jesus they make money. Christ. You're a woman. Yeah, so she comes in and she's like, ah, oh, broke off my marriage. Oh my God. And Monica? Yes. Yes, probably. Is like, hey. Dark hair? This is Rachel. Yes. yes. Monica. Phoebe's Monica. the one with the blonde hair. Because Phoebe doesn't know Rachel yet. Right. Okay, yeah, Phoebe's Nobody the does crazy accept one. Monica, I guess. That gets retconned later on in the series. What? Yeah, because Monica's known her since like high school, so therefore Ross has to have known her because that's well, her brother. Well, she mentions in the first ten minutes that they went to the same high school. That she okay. also went to the high school, but I guess no one knew her anyway because okay. she says she's another survivor of something high. Well, Monica I think she's only. Ta- but Monica's only Monica talking about is talking about Rachel to the rest of the people. Yeah, yeah. And okay. she says she's another survivor of blah 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 high. Got it. Um, yeah, because the two of them went to high school together, and then Ross went to the same high school, I think. And then Chandler was Ross's college roommate so chandler also technically knows rachel but this is a, something that comes uh, as a retcon later on <laughs> do we know so much more about friends than i do i used to watch it as a kid i watched it as an adult i just don't remember anything i watched it as a kid a lot yeah, like I used to watch friends it. used to be one of my favorite shows as a it's child a good, it's a good show it's funny uh, colin what do you think of the first 10 minutes yeah the thing is there's times when it's an uphill battle from the start and if you have whether it's an actual studio audience or a laugh track, it is a humongous uphill battle. I despise uh, that. Okay. I do not like being told when something is funny. Interesting. Like, let me laugh on my own terms. I don't like fake laugh tracks. I like uh, live I, audiences. It doesn't matter. Either way, just it feels so weird to be like, hey, these other people are laughing. I'm not <laughs> with them. Who are these people? Who are these ghosts whose voices I am hearing? The people it, who went to the which theater. Which is interesting because I feel like on the opposite side of that is another thing you don't like. When shows just kind of play things straight. Yeah. So you're, you're Harry Styles. You're in the middle. <laughs> Colin, do you not you like want... comedies? It feels like a TV show. <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's <laughs> it's like, a good You don't want a laugh question. track because that's too, well, hey, see, this is funny, is, but you don't like, want. Have you watched Abbott Elementary yet? Because it doesn't do either of those things. No, you keep telling me to. And maybe I'll start it. I mean, it's just like, I think the problem is that I've been ruined by the internet. And so my humor has taken a turn for the absurd. Oh, yeah. Your humor is like a lot of our generation. But even then, he didn't just like nonsense. the rehearsal, which has got to be absurd as humor, right? Is it humor at all? Yes. I think that's the point. <sighs> it, it, I Maybe. mean, yeah, I, I think know. it is. But the problem is the we're not talking about that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, we already did the 10 minute take on the rehearsal. Yeah. I, I, Friends is that I was mean, our first ever 10 minute take. True. Yeah. It's a sitcom. Sitcoms aren't really my vibe. Okay. Um, and obviously watching 10 minutes of a show that runs for seven seasons is not going to give me a <laughs> sense of- 10 seasons. 10 seasons Ooh. is not going to give me a sense of why people love it. Right. But uh, mostly what I was thinking is that David Schwimmer sounds like a Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Play a Muppet. I can see that. Yeah. 
The uh, plot twist of this episode was that I'm the friends expert here. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know that. Do you hate Ross yet? Which one is I that? Is that David Schwimmer? David Schwimmer. No, but aren't I supposed to hate him because they were on a break or something? <sighs> no, he's just overall, he's like. I have a lot of opinions about Ross. The like, I don't think I hate widely him. Widely accepted mm-hmm. thing is that Ross sucks. is. Yeah, he sucks. Oh. But kind of, yeah. I don't think the show wants you to think Ross sucks. Oh, okay. Just people watch the show. He's like, oh, not this guy a sucks. great boyfriend. I the fact that Rachel ends up with him still upsets me. It's been years. <laughs> that sounds like it would upset you. See, that's interesting because I don't think the first ten minutes does that. If anything, the I first ten minutes no. makes me dislike Chandler because he hits on Rachel on her wedding, no longer wedding day. I mean, she she's single now. Yeah, she she married. Yeah, but <laughs> she's processing it. Like, give her some time. Bro. That's fair, I guess. I don't know. Chandler's great. Chandler's Chandler, well, my favorite. Chandler character. Chandler has a lot of character growth though, which is why he ends up being so great. I think a lot of these characters are great for the time. Okay. Yes. Fair. Mm. fair. But it's also like you. you you go 10 seasons, you're going to find things about all these characters that don't work yeah. or that aren't great about them. Because, you know, characters just are Just like actual people. They're, yeah, they don't need to just be great. Like, Chandler's funny. He's sarcastic. Well, I'd say he's a great character because he actually does have that character growth. Yeah, he I just really like him because he's funny. Matthew Perry is dope. Chenandler Bong. <laughs> that is a fantastic episode. I love that episode. But, uh, Seven. Yeah, you saw Seven. <laughs> Seven. And then I still do the pivot thing. Everybody does the pivot thing. Uh, yeah. I'm pivot. <laughs> Yeah, I did that recently. I don't remember who. Oh, it was with you guys, I think. Probably for helping Gabby with yes. the move. Yeah, good to know. We got to get Living Single on your list. I you got to watch not Living on Single. There? I do need to watch Living Single. I think we should watch Living Single together. Okay, that could be fun. I kind of want to, but I also kind of want him to do a ten minute take just to compare. He can do a ten minute take, but Dallas, I think me and you should watch <laughs> Living Single together. Well, we can watch it and then pause it after ten minutes. He can give us a ten minute take, and then we can. Too bad we can't do that after uh, we're done recording. Down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay, cool. That was friends. Yeah like it you like it it's fine you're not like it because sitcoms yeah sitcoms just aren't really my thing and just laugh tracks make you feel weird here's the thing i'm going to ask that colin for our next review instead of doing the number generator that he just do living single just so that we have the back-to-back of friends to living single it does seem like good continuity um i would yeah if you can remind me of that i will like later in the week but yeah i can totally do that because it's on hbo max and i think i think it would be a good idea to do it's friends to do the back-to-back awesome yeah i can totally do that compare and contrast all right you got you guys got a sneak peek of next time on 10 Minute Takes. News. News trailer tracking. Creed 3. Oh boy. I'm hyped. I'm so excited. I love the Creed movies. I was already excited, but the trailer came out and I was like, oh wait, I'm really excited. Yeah. I think even more so because it was hard to tell where Creed 3 was going to go yeah. after Creed 2. Mm-hmm. Especially with Sylvester Stallone not returning as Rocky. Yeah. Um, but this trailer really made it feel like for the first time Creed as a character and as a movie franchise is going to stand on his own without right. Rocky. Which I love because everybody was, there are people who still think that Jonathan Majors is playing Mr. T's son. Hilarious. <laughs> it's like it can't always just be somebody's kid. Which in fairness the first one wasn't. But like after Drago's kid showed up it was like oh is that what we're going to do now? I love how personal all three of these movies feel. I mean we haven't seen the third one obviously right. but this trailer does make it feel like this is very much a personal Oh, yeah. fight and i feel like every fight in the creed movies have been personal even in the first movie even though it wasn't somebody that he knew or cared about or anything like that it was personal because he was trying to prove himself yeah that's more interpersonal yeah like i'm fighting me and then you know the second one is all the legacy. generational beef yeah the first one was like i have to prove this to myself the second mm-hmm. one was legacy and this one feels like yo we were homies and there's bad blood and now we gotta the funny thing about this one fight it out and I don't know if I've so talked to you guys about this or just Kayla, is how much of this feels like now Michael B. Jordan is the other side of the Killmonger story. <laughs> because Jonathan Majors, like, you know, he was a young kid. Things didn't work out for him. And now he's looking at his homie, not cousin, but friend who's like, you got everything that I didn't get. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I'm as entitled to this as you are. I was better than you were. Right. He's like, I'm the best. I shouldn't. I'm assuming whatever that situation was of them getting in trouble. Dame got in trouble and Creed didn't. And Donnie did. I feel like Donnie probably did. I mean, the first time we, (laughs) yeah, the first time we meet Donnie, he is in juvenile detention. I think the problem is, is that he's in juvie. It looks like because shout out to Spence Moore, the second who is on all American and is playing the younger version of Jonathan Majors, character in this movie. He looks like he's older than him. Yeah. So he probably went to jail as an adult. Mm. And Donnie has Felicia Rashad 
Oh yeah. To come get him out of that situation. He's in the got first the movie. legacy. He's got the name. He's got exactly. Creed. So you have all this kind of like T'Challa has all of this. I don't because I'm not the king's son. I'm. I had to make this myself. Just a nigga went to jail. I have to fight for myself. And now I'm back. The whole thing about when uh, Wood Harris tells him, like, you don't owe this dude anything. Yeah. It's kind of like when Angela Bassett is like, say no, send this nigga home. <laughs> and he's like feeling that guilt of like, nah, because I feel bad. I should give this dude a shot. And he's probably going to get his ass beat just like the child did. You're not going to throw him off a waterfall. But you don't know. He might pick him up and throw him out the ring. Jonathan Majors looks big enough to he do it in this dude. movie. He a big dude. He could Which throw him out. Which is crazy. So first off, Jonathan Majors just looks huge in this movie. Yes. But I also know that he said he gained 10 pounds of muscle to play Kang. So, like, really? is that 10 pounds on top of this? Or? It's like, oh, yeah, I gained 10 pounds of muscle to play Kang. And then another 40 for Creed <laughs> 3. Oh, man, I'm so hyped. It's Jonathan calling... Majors is one of my favorite actors right now. He's amazing. Like, he's so good. Also, seeing from director Michael B. Jordan just made me so proud. Really cool. I'm just like, ugh, we went from Ryan Coogler to Stephen Cable Jr. and now to Michael B. Jordan. And it just feels so fitting that Michael B. Jordan be the director because the Rocky movies were directed by Sylvester Stallone. So yeah. it feels like full circle, like, yeah, Creed has to do the same thing. Michael B. Jordan's got to be in charge at some point. And it looks like it's a great directorial debut. It does. Colin, as somebody who has never seen any of the Creed movies, and <laughs> yeah. I don't think you've seen any of the Rocky movies, nope. what do you think of the trailer? Uh, it, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. It's like... I'm not going to watch Creed 3 unless I go back and watch 1 and 2 because it's Creed 3. But mm. I like that it does seem like it's a personal thing. It feels like if I wanted to watch Creed 3 without watching 1 and 2, I might be able to because yeah, it it's just like about that. a childhood friend who's never been mentioned before. Yeah. And it's kind of like, to an extent, not all the time now, the Mission Impossible movies. Yeah. It's like you come into one, new villain, new mission. Who this? Not except like, for when we went to go see Mission Impossible Five, which is or Mission Impossible Six was the first time that they were like, Yeah, Fallout, let's have right? continuity. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like, wait, what? I need to remember things now. I don't remember these movies, guys. But yeah, this one is this dude we've never seen before is gonna beat Creed up for a bit, and then you know, Creed will probably win. Maybe. Boxing movies. Everything you need to know about the first two, <laughs> Creed found out who he is, he got with Tessa Thompson, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Come up. Baby. Seven years later. There's a scene where they're sitting in what looks like a prison. Yeah, I think it's at the juvenile detention center because they're saying Creed, they're chanting okay. his name. Yeah, because it looks like Creed is with his family at the table. Yeah, and there are teenagers all around them. It's not grown as adults. Uh, okay. so. <laughs> you know, they're going to have to have a scene where Jonathan Majors is telling him what happened. And I was like hoping that he'll be in that facility. This is where the God used to beat me, Donnie. Dang it, man. <laughs> I was waiting. I was going to bring it up, but like I figured yeah. you'd get there. I was like, there's going to be a reason for it. Every time. Every time. Without fail. I do like Tessa Thompson's uh, delivery of the, um, well, it looks like you're just going to have to fight him. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Especially because in the first movie, her character, Bianca, was so against him, like boxing. Like, not so against him, but she wasn't, she wasn't, she didn't really get it. Mm. And it, you know, she was kind of squeamish about it. As any girlfriend probably would be if you watch your boyfriend's first, like, boxing match. Yeah, like, I remember the fight where he, the, uh, the one that I think might be a one-shot. The one-shot from yeah. the first movie? And that was a really good The fight. winner? Yeah, yeah, and then she was, like, oh, really excited for him. But then by the time we get to Creed 2, and he's just getting dog-walked, <laughs> she is like, oh, no, I don't like this at all. <laughs> and now she's just like, no, 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 you're going to have to fight this dude. Right. Because it's obvious he hasn't been fighting in a, in a minute. It looks like he's come up. And this movie mm -hmm. obviously does not take place in Philly. It took me three watches of this trailer to realize that. But I think what confused or not like threw me off is uh, Wood Harris. I forgot that Wood Harris was his trainer, I think, at his home gym. Yeah. And that's in L.A. Because then that's he goes right. to he Philly in the to first Philly movie. In the first he's not movie. from Philly. That's right. So then I, for some reason, thought that Wood Harris was his trainer in Philly. I was like, well, Wood Harris is there. But no, he's his trainer from L.A. All right. But yeah, Creed 3, I'm excited. I'm super stoked, and we'll definitely be doing a reaction video before that movie comes out. I was disappointed when they first announced that the date was getting pushed, up, pushed back, mm -hmm. but I am a very big fan of March 3rd, so 3 oh, 3 they knew what they were doing. Oh, yeah. For the third Creed movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. stuff. We love to see it. We do. All right, news from now on. <laughs> Harrison Ford is set to play Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross in Cap 4, taking up the role from William Hurt. I'm just hoping that this means that he's going to be in Thunderbolts, which I'm assuming he is because his nickname I is mean, Thunderbolts. I mean, really why would not you to be. not? Exactly, which means that Thunderbolts really is just being made for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love Harrison Ford. I'm a Star Wars fan. Obviously, I love Harrison Ford. He's on Solo. Yo, the thing is, you've been talking a lot 
after this news came out about like, man, the press is going to be wild because he doesn't great. care. And I just had the thought, but I'm going to walk it back because I was thinking, oh, he should do hot ones, but he's so old he would die. Uh. <laughs> Listen, that man has survived plane crashes. He, That's true. He did survive plane crashes. He would probably be fine. Yeah. You know what? If you're going to recast this role, Harrison Ford just seems like the perfect person to take it on. Thunderbolt Ross seems tired always in the MCU. <laughs> like Colin said, I have been talking about the press tour that will inevitably have to happen. Mm -hmm. Harrison Ford having to talk about MCU movies, it's going to be better than when Christian Bale had to do it. See, and that's the thing, right? It's like, because I think Christian Bale was one of the ones, he said like, what's the MCU or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. And like, people were like, how can you not know what the MCU, but Harrison Ford may literally not know what the MCU is. And he does not care. I promise you he doesn't. And I'm so excited for that because Christian Bale was already saying, basically it was clown work. He was saying like it was monotonous and every day was the same and I had no idea what I was doing because yes. it was just a green screen. And He said he got mm. lost on sound stages because he was like, yeah. which blue screen am I supposed to be going to? Yeah, and just like Harrison Ford, this old crotchety man. Like I have Indiana Jones and that is the thing that I love. I love him so much. And obviously this role is not requiring a lot of action from him no. because he just said he's not doing Indiana Jones anymore because he was like I'm done falling for you guys yeah. so obviously he's not doing too much action stunt work in this movie but I think that it's a good replacement it's a good choice I just I just want Red Hulk guys give me Red if you're going to bring this character back after the actor passed like you have to do something with okay, it okay so with Thunderbolts. yeah is Red Hulk like the Hulk where they're kind of separate entities at first I, I'm he saying at first because the Hulk is not anymore most of the stuff I've read with Red Hulk is the run of Thunderbolts, where he's the leader. Okay. And no, he seems pretty much, he's fully in control of his faculty. She-Hulk style. Okay, so yeah. what you're telling me is Big Hulk smashing things, looking crazy, sounding like Harrison Ford. Yes. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> That's what I want to know. And also looking like a red case. Harrison Ford. Yes. Yes, giant, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, I want this. That could be interesting. Mm, yes. Fantastic. I love it. It's a good choice. All right, more superheroes. DC, there's stuff happening. There's D well, oh yeah, there's there is supposedly stuff happening. In there's supposedly yeah, stuff inside happening. sources. Confirmed. Oh, inside sources to Hollywood Reporter though, which means that they're probably it, it probably is a legitimate inside source. Okay, I trust the Hollywood Reporter. Okay, so we got Man of Steel two was in the works and looking for a writer. Yes, and supposedly Christopher McQuarrie is on that list of writers. But he's also working on the Mission Impossible movies right say, now. say, is that the Mission Impossible dude? He is the Mission Impossible dude. Oh, yeah, there's. there's, uh, there's also, there's, I think he and Henry Cavill years ago pitched a Man of Steel 2 that was denied or something like that. So he probably would have an idea already. Hmm. And one that Henry Cavill clearly approves of because he helped him pitch it. Right. I'm down. Uh, Man of Steel is not one of my favorite movies. Like, it is also not one of my favorites. Yeah, it's, it's cool. But it ain't top five DC movies for sure. No. I feel like since Man of Steel, we've gotten Superman to a place where I enjoy him more. So I feel like if they do a Man of Steel 2, I'll probably enjoy it more than I enjoyed the first one. So the thing that kind of confuses me is Henry Cavill, Superman, cool, great, love it, go ahead. I don't care. I mean, but a lot right. of people do. But the Snyder people. No, 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 no. No, but that's my thing, no. right? Like, is it? Do they just, they obviously want Zack Snyder back. It's not going to happen. He's moved on. But it's like, this doesn't, does this add fuel to the fire or not? Because this doesn't mean that Zack Snyder's going to come back. Anything will add fuel to the it fire. It doesn't mean add fuel to the fire because he made Man of Steel. But the, he's not coming back unless he changes his mind. They're hoping that. The fire isn't back. based on the likelihood that he comes back. It's based on how much they want him to come back. For sure. Yeah. So it's, we want this thing. It's not how likely is it that we get this thing. So then when you have the sequel to the thing that started this whole thing, yes, that's definitely going to add fuel to the fire. There will always be fuel to the fire. I don't think that this is going to stop anytime soon. I'm trying to find a way to word my opinions without pissing people off. Um, I love Some Henry people you're allowed to piss off. I know. I love Henry Cavill as Superman. I have not been fond of the way that they have written this particular Superman. Yeah. I think that there's just a warmth that is missing from him. Mm-hmm. You got the bathtub scene. Oh, my God. Wait, hold on. That's my favorite scene. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's my favorite Superman I mean, I thought scene. That... Ooh. Ah, ooh. Out of my least okay. favorite DC so movie. So here's the thing. Not <laughs> having seen Man of Steel, uh -huh. I got to say, I thought there was some warmth in the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut has come extremely close to being a Superman that I really want to see more often. 
there it's still not quite hitting the mark for me but it is definitely close and almost there and i know that henry cavill being the super huge superman fan that he is Mm -hmm. i know that he can pull off being the superman that i would like to see yeah and i know that he can because he's talked about it before and about what direction he wants to see superman go into and i agree with his assessment of where he wants that character to go i'm all for a man of steel too the first man of steel i thought was good there are things that i like about it there are a lot of things that i don't like about it mostly i think it needs to be re-edited and restructured (laughs) other than that you know it's it's pretty good yeah i think even at the end of a canon justice league I like that Superman. When he comes back, I do too. And he's making his cheesy catchphrases, and he's. I believe in truth, but I'm also a big fan of justice. Doing that stuff, the interactions he has with Bruce later on, I like that. I'm waiting for my Boy Scout. Yeah, and I feel like we're moving in that direction with that stuff. Man of Steel didn't give me a lot of that. It was I'm sad. I watched my dad die in a tornado, despite the fact that I could have and should have saved him. And before any of you people like get on me about, Ooh. he smiles in that movie. I know he does. <laughs> it's a beautiful smile. I agree with you. I'm sorry. That's the defense is that he smiles? Yes. That's not enough. It's mostly because a lot Being of people a Boy were Scout like... Being isn't smiling. A lot of people were complaining that he doesn't smile a lot in that movie or in any of those movies for that matter. He has 33 lines in Batman vs. Superman and that movie's like two and a half hours. I'm sorry. What? Yes. You He's know in people, the title. Colin, <laughs> you know how people are about smiles. You remember Captain Marvel? <laughs> she wouldn't smile enough? No, I Smiles know. Smiles are very important but for that's comic not, book movies. No, 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 no. That's not how it works, though. It sounds like the problem is he hasn't been doing enough. I think the problem is what he's been doing and how he's been doing it. Ah. But that's just my problem. But also, I agree like I you. said, I think we're moving in the right direction. I think we will get there. And I look forward to finding out who is writing this and directing it. Yeah. Speed of, that will actually yeah. dictate how excited I get for it. Because right now right. I'm super excited because I love the idea of Henry Cavill returning as Superman. Mm-hmm. But depending on who they get to write and direct... Quentin Tarantino. Okay, so oh, here's the thing. What if, what if Curveball, Deborah Snyder, what directs it? Yeah, does she direct anything? I don't no, know. I think she's just. A producer. She's a producer. I'm just saying, like they get a Snyder. Oh, that would be funny. Speaking of directors, James Gunn is in talks for a mystery project. Scooby Doo three. No, probably not. Uh, it's working on Peacemaker season two. The mystery project is for DC. This yes. is all DC news. Yeah, yeah this is all DC, DC stuff. Yeah, I'm holding out hope for Scooby Doo three. In the DC universe? Sure. Why not? Why not? How? I think Scooby-Doo has met Superman and Batman before, so why not? Yeah, all this Warner Brothers stuff has crossed over before in like cartoons and all that. Yeah, I don't know how excited I can be about mystery news, but I if like you James Gunn. don't know Gunn. what it is, yeah. I don't know what the project is. Yeah, it's like, I'm excited at the idea of James Gunn doing more DC stuff because The Suicide Squad is amazing. It's I am curious one. as to what he would want to pick up, though. Oh, he's such a weird dude. It's exactly. probably something extremely strange. Yo. What if James Gunn does a Lobo movie? That's probably not what it is, but I'm just saying. I want that to be it. But also, the two actors I want to play Lobo are already cast in, in the, the DCEU. DCEU. Because it's Dwayne Johnson and Jason Momoa. Those are the perfect Lobos. But yeah, I'm excited Peacemaker 2, that sounds fun. I know, right? Peacemaker, pro- <laughs> Peacemaker Season 2, I'm down. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm excited. Let's get weird. Season 1 was amazing. Oh yeah, James Gunn is so weird. If it's a project that he's angling for, I'm sure it's going to be some weird D-list character, and I can't wait to watch it. But yeah, that's that. Speaking of directors and sequels, Matt Reeves is writing the Batman sequel, prepping for Penguin series. Oh, yeah, the Penguin series. All right. All right. And searching for writers and directors yeah, to build out his cool. Gotham verse with movies and shows about Batman's rogues gallery. Okay, so hold on. I need a second to process that. I have to ask this question. Okay. So this stuff is not the DCE. No. Colin, how many times do we have to tell you that? It just boggles the mind every time. I don't Look, know what man, saying. Twilight Give me Batman. A chart. It's not, a, you don't need a chart. Ben Affleck, DCEU. Twilight, Batman, not that. Michael Keaton, DCEU? No. Pending? Yes? No. Isn't he going to be in the thing? He's in The Flash, but now it's looking like he might not be the Batman after The Flash is over, now that they've got Ben Affleck making an appearance in Aquaman. Okay, no. I'm, I'm not saying no, that he's going to be the main that's, Batman. Yeah, that's see, all we're I was confusing asking. Him now. What I'm saying is if you see no. Michael Keaton on screen, you're watching a DCEU movie. Okay, that's all that's I can... Yeah, Except that's what for I'm the asking. old Batman movies. Well, Bit. okay, but... Don't sure, watch... Yeah. <laughs> now. <laughs> Michael Keaton... In a movie now. Michael Keaton is Tobey Maguire in No Way Home. Wait, what? No, see, now it's more confused. What? <laughs> <laughs> because Tobey Maguire is Spider-Man in the MCU in No Way Home, but he wasn't in his other movies. It's a very good parallel, but now Colin is more confused. Okay, so, anyway... Just know, so, if we get, say Matt Reeves, but, okay. it's not DCEU. But also, 
Joker you know, is not DCU, but is not Matt Reeves. Yes. Right. Separate. Separate. Thing. Separate things. Because I think that's where I get confused because Joker is a Batman villain. Yes. Yes. But no. But Batman is a child in that. So right. Yes. He does the creepy mouth thing. And also okay. he's played by also Matt Reeves' Joker is played by a completely different actor. Yes. Right. Okay. So Matt Reeves is building his own thing, which he, is separate. He has from these his own little things. Gotham area. Course. And yes. he's apparently building it. Yes. yes. Like it's getting built up. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> This was a fun little explanation. I, there are rogues that I like. I want a Scarecrow movie, to be honest. He's the only one that really interests me just because of what his power is. I think Scarecrow is. was one of the examples given. I think yes. also oh. Professor... Ranging from the Scarecrow to Clayface to Professor Pig. Colin, have you seen Professor Pig? Horrifying. He might show up in one of the Arkham games that I played. He but... does show up in the Arkham games. I don't know if you played that one. Mm-hmm. but uh, Again, horrifying. Yeah. That can only be a horror movie. What does he do? To my knowledge, he's a serial killer. Okay. He wears a pig mask. Okay. Like a butcher knife. That definitely fits into Matt Reeves' All right, universe. so he's just like, they took, I mean, well, I guess the Saw movies took that from him because he probably cr- was created before they were, but. I am excited about the idea of possibly a Clayface movie or series or whatever because it means that Matt Reeves is willing to go into the fantastical parts of the Batman rogues gallery. Mm-hmm. So that means Mr. Freeze maybe could pop up or poison ivy or you know all the stranger the freaks of the batman universe and not just the mobsters and the serial killers yeah i want to see some i want to have some fun i, wanna... I mean i'm already having fun but i can have more fun <laughs> i want poison ivy yeah i want it to feel like i don't want it to feel too much like nolan's and i like nolan's movies yeah but they feel so grounded that it's like somebody on I twitter like i'm watching batman somebody on twitter made a good point that when matt reeves says grounded we also have to remember that this is the man who gave us like two planet of the apes movies mm-hmm. and cloverfield which are all mm. very grounded movies right but also have a big giant kaiju <laughs> and have a world full of apes that are sentient and talk and stuff like that yeah so i'm cool with the, his version of grounded but i really would love to see clayface and i know that, that's the one he really wants to do right was it him who wants to do clayface flanagan Flanagan. Fl- oh, my oh my god. god. That's what I want. That's why I want a Clayface. A Mike Flanagan Clayface movie? I don't even know that much about Clayface, but that just sounds horrifying. It would be horrifying and I would love it. And that's the thing is that Mike Flanagan is so good at the drama that we would get all of the pain and the like anguish. Yeah, not just I'm a big clay monster. It would be everything leading up to that, everything that that affects. It would be Also, those clay cinema. effects would be upsetting. Call oh, Mike Flanagan. We need a cinema on our hands. Yeah, well, you got to talk to Matt Reeves about that. You need to tell him to go take a look at Flanagan. Call Matt and Mike. We, we need cinema on our hands. Yeah, I just, I am excited about Matt Reeves' Gotham because he just seems so passionate about it and he seems like such a big Batman fan. I have already said that The Batman is my favorite Batman movie thus far. I'm excited to see what he comes up with, especially if it's, I feel like for the first time we'll have a Batman universe that is both the grounded aspects of Batman, but also the fantastical ones as well. Mm. Yeah. Because they do it in cartoons all the time. Batman the Animated Series does it very, very well. Does everything so well. But I think this would be the first time on like live action film that we would get that balance as well. Colin. Me. I'm going to read you a short description of Professor Pig. Okay. Grant Morrison, the guy who wrote some of the weirdest Doom Patrol stuff. Okay. He's great. Created Professor Pig. Okay. And intended Pig to seem disconnected from reality, believing him to be one of the weirdest, most insane characters in Batman comic books. Pig. That's a high bar. Yeah. Pig is an obsessive perfectionist who sees human beings as broken individuals. He commonly kidnaps people and uses surgery and chemicals to permanently change them into mind controls, automatons known as dolatrons, and sometimes into human-animal hybrids. So it'd have to be a horror movie. So he's kind of... Reeves' universe is on the edge of horror movie anyway. Dr. Moreau, Dr. Steinman, Shao Tucker. Okay, I vibe. really bad doctors. I vibe. Yeah, and he's just a scary dude with a pig mask and always has blood on him. Oh, okay. the things that he does so yeah if they announced that which i'd be surprised if they did but i love it i'd really look to see who's gonna be the director because i'm like what scary person are you gonna give me to bring this to life can, can we get some james mike wan flanagan. mike flanagan again <laughs> jordan peele to really make it weird indie horror director who's just on the come up yeah and then like it's gonna do some huge blockbuster comic book movie later like the shazam guy david f sandberg yeah like scott derrickson yeah there's a lot of overlap. I'm with it. Moving further into DC, J.J. Abrams is still producing Ta-Nehisi Coates' Superman movie. Some of his supernatural shows, like Zatanna, have been scrapped. Oh, uh-huh. I didn't know that. I really wanted a Zatanna show. I just want Zatanna somewhere. <laughs> Me too. I love Zatanna. 
I have to plug my agenda here. I'll do it. Um, Asa yeah. Gonzalez for Zatanna, please. Thank you. Agendas are fun. What's wrong? Okay. What you got? So. Oh that's... no. Are you gonna ask what universe it is? Uh huh. We don't know. I actually, I'm not sure about so that. So that's a. We know it's a black Superman. Yes. Oh well, that won't be part of the DCEU. Okay. Right. Unless. Are the they feature doing... would exist outside any larger DC movie continuity, much like Todd Phillips' Joker movies. So separate. Another universe. Why? Another, I, another I universe. I guess I'm wondering why they're not trying to bring everything together with a multiverse. They, they did. kind of are. They are. They're saying we have a multiverse, so now we can make movies outside of our main universe, and it doesn't matter. Oh, but they're not going to bring them together. No, they don't have to. It's a Probably multiverse. Not. Okay. I just like, I feel like that's... Like, when you say multiverse, I think what I expect is No Way Home, which is like, look, we can bring everything together. These people you didn't think would ever interact are going to interact. Right. Wow. Well, that's what The Flash is for, but it's also so that they can just be like, we're just making movies, and we don't mm. have to connect it to our main timeline anymore. Okay. Yeah, like comic books. Okay. So, yeah, different they're, thing. They're like Elseworld stories. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, cool. I'm here for Black Superman. Make the people mad. Even I'm, though it's not even the same character, they're still going to be mad. It's not. No, it is. It's Clark. It's it, Clark? I think it's going to be Clark. I thought it was Val Zod or I, whatever his name is. Because the article calls, it, calls him the son of Krypton. And that's typically used just for Clark. Right. But yeah, the Zods are from Krypton. <sighs> he could be Kryptonian Killmonger. Oh my god! I'm thinking like a Young Justice. Yes. The newest season. I love that. Exactly. The Black Zods. I think that's what they're going to do. They could do that. I'm mostly interested because Tana Hesse Coates is writing it. Right. And, you know. I want to see how he's going to make people angry. And he wrote Black Panther comics. And you those were some of my favorite stuff. Black Panther comics. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. I'm sad about Zatanna. I didn't know that was a thing. that. Does the happen. Black Superman movie have a director? No, no. Just bring in Ryan Coogler for that one. I'm with it. Like, put those two together and the commentary would be pristine. I want Ryan Coogler to go off and have some time to do his own things before he goes back to making those big superhero movies again i want him to do everything that i want him to do <laughs> yeah i don't know this is another one that i'll find out more about it and i will be excited or not black superman is inherently exciting for me and i can't wait does he have his own particularly dope suit or is it like the superman suit valzad has his own suit nice, nice, nice. yeah i would assume man satana i know but i want to dce use zatana though if we're not even certain if we're not sure that abram's zatana was even going to be involved like Probably not. Fine, all, but... all right, what's next up? Oh, Hamada's leaving. He's officially, he's leaving. He's gone. He out. He out of there. He left already. Yeah, he, he, he done dipped. Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay, so I know that some people would say I'm supposed to hate him because I'm supposed to be defending Ray, Ray Fisher. Fisher. Thing. Is there any other reason we're supposed to not like him? No, it's just that. Okay, cool. I can't keep up with the DC people, to be honest. Like, I don't know which ones did things. I don't know which ones have allegations. I don't know which ones are like anti Ray Fisher, team Ray Fisher. I, I don't. I don't Ray know. Fisher accused Hamada of covering up the investigation. Got it. Okay. But yeah, as like far as the movies go, mm -hmm. this man leaving means nothing to me. Okay. So. Uh, it means a little. It means slightly guy? to me because he's the one who kind of gave us, he gave us Shazam and Birds of Prey and like most of the ones that we've liked so far. Was this the one who they found a replacement, but then that guy dropped out of being his replacement? Out of negotiations. Oh, okay. Yes. But it is that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tis him. Is he, I don't want to draw parallels, but. What, they're Kevin Feige? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's in charge of DC film. Okay, thank you. Or, well, he was. He's not there anymore. Right. He, he left. He's like not even at WB anymore. Yeah. Oh, is he like retired or just? He left. Just, he just left their studio. Okay. Like the Batgirl thing like pissed just, him off, I guess. Snuck out while they were at lunch. Huh. Came back like, we're Walt. Yeah. But apparently the people him. at WB wanted him to stay. Oh. The people who are in charge of like their film div division or whatever, they wanted him to stay. Hmm. But the Batgirl thing really got to him. In what sense? They didn't consult him before they decided they were going to make it a tax write off. Oh, Which is wild before they because he's it? in charge. Okay. Yeah, I feel like if he's at the head of the film division, you he's would at least be like, yo, heads up, we're going to kill this movie. After you've already filmed it. Yeah, that's weird. And I think the reason that I don't care, and I'm glad you brought up the Kevin Feige, the DC movies, and this isn't for me like a big negative or positive, they don't all feel as Cohesive? unified as the MCU. Yeah. Like if Kevin Feige left, I would think, huh. Something's going to change in a big way because this all feels like one long story. Mm -hmm. The DC movies haven't done that and yet. And also because yeah. Kevin Feige puts himself not front and center. 
But when they want to announce a new phase, he's the one who does it. Mm-hmm. It's Walter his brainchild. Hamada doesn't really come out that often as far as I've seen right. and say, yeah. this is what we got going on with DC. Hamada yeah. is the second guy in charge, I believe. Yeah. Um, somebody else was in charge before him. And then he came in after the Justice League debacle. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. But yeah, it's like when everything feels so different to me, for me, I'm just like, I don't think losing Hamada is going to be like, oh, no, they can't do this thing that mm. they did, mm-hmm. whether I like that thing or not. Next news piece. Well, one thing I want to say about that one is that apparently the article says, quote, right now it's the Wild West, <laughs> says oh, one yeah. insider. Everyone is trying to grab up as much as they can, and this is exactly what happens in a leadership vacuum. Wait, grab up? Like, yeah, are they because... taking hard drive? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> they just snatch your computers out the office. No, it's just that, like, people are claiming, like, certain IP areas of dc so for instance like they want a man of steel too but also dwayne the rock johnson wants a superman versus black adam sort of thing they want to lead into that but that's not associated with whoever's trying to do the man of steel thing and then you've got james gunn doing his thing in that corner matt reeves doing his thing in that corner all of them are just kind of going i want to do this i want to do this i want to do this but there's nobody in charge of dc films right now wild Jesus, west gone. this sounds like a mess yes um... that's why it's the wild west Okay, on to something you guys like. New Percy Jackson novel coming fall 2023. That's right. I've Y'all already, read? I pre-ordered I it. I would like to be excited about this, but I need to catch up on my Percy Jackson because I don't know where he's at in his life. Like, I know what he is at the start of this book because he's going to college. It says that. Okay. But have I kept up with him to this point? No, and what? I should. Do you need to read the Apollo books in order to know what's going well, on Well, the with Apollo Percy? books, I don't know, but I don't think I ever actually finished Heroes of Olympus. I don't think you finished Heroes of Olympus, but you only yeah. have, like, one book left, but now you'll have to But now I'd them. have to, I mean, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to start from The Lightning Thief. I probably will, too. Because, especially with the show. Actually, no, I'm not. That book comes out next year. I'm not finishing 10 books before that happens. You I'm, absolutely can. I remember enough from those you books. You can do it. No, but I also, can't. don't you want to reread the first five books because of the show? I think Maybe. you do. I, I mean, I'll read the first book before the first season comes out. That's well, fair. I'll read a book per season, maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to read all five before the first season comes out. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I've already pre-ordered mine. Mm. Which is funny because it's not coming out until September 26, 2023. So I've got a long time before that, that even happens. That's a whole year out. Well, not a whole year out, but it's basically a whole year out. Y'all got some time. I'm excited just because it's Percy Jackson. That's all that matters here. Next up, is there anything else? There is one more thing. It's something that I am super excited about. James Samuel. He's back. Book of Clarence. Don't know what it's about. But James Samuel is making another movie with Lakeith Stanfield and Omar Sy. Who is James Samuel made The Heart of They Fall. Oh, that's why you're upset. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's right. It's an original idea? Yes. So is The Heart of They Fall, so. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, that's why we don't know what it is. is what yeah, it's an original oh, yeah. project that Samuel wrote and will direct, produce, and compose because he's also oh, really? a musical man. Yeah, that's he composed awesome. the last movie, too. Yeah. Yo. And he was like, he makes music. How did he have time for that? He's just, he's that dude. Michael Giacchino did it. I don't know. The movie was 50 minutes. That's the thing. Okay, it was 50 minutes on top of how many movies has he scored this year? Probably a lot, to be honest. I can think of like three (laughs) off the top of my head. So he do be composing. Oh, Jay Z's producing again. Look at that. I'm excited because How Do They Fall was my favorite movie of last year and just one of my favorite movies ever. Lakeith was one of my favorite parts about it. His performance was fantastic. Omar Sy is someone I've seen before, but I haven't seen him in a lot of stuff, but I've heard great things about him. Yeah, he's in Lupin, right? On Netflix? Yes, he's in Lupin, which I have not seen. Also, I think he's the guy in the new Jurassic Park movie. Jurassic World movie? Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) If not, sorry, Omar. But also the title intrigues me. The Book of Clarence. And the only reason that intrigues me is because it's a line in The Heart of They Fall. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, RJ Kyler, Jim Beckworth. His whole thing is that I'm faster than everybody else. And he has a line where they're sitting there on their horses. And he says, as it says in The Book of Clarence... Ain't no man outspeed me. Oh, so is this a spinoff? If it's a spinoff, Lakeith Stanfield already has a character in this movie. So that means that he's just playing an earlier version of that character. Or he's playing another character and they don't care. Could be that. I mean, I guess. I would assume not, though. Also, the second half of that is uh, Eddie Gathega's character says, uh, Clarence ain't no book, outspeed ain't no word. I kind of hope Cherokee Bill puts a bullet in your ass to shut you up. And like their dynamic is great. But also, if this has anything to do with The Heart of They Fall, that would probably mean that RJ Kyler's in it, because that was his line, and that's what the title is. This is all extreme speculation. It's the sequel to The Book of Eli, obviously. I watched that too. It's The Book of Universe. <laughs> it's The Book of Universe. Yeah, if James Samuel wants to make a Book of Eli sequel, 
If Denzel wants to come through and make some guarantees. <laughs> Does he make a guarantee in that movie? He better. Omar Sy is in Jurassic World Dominion and the first Jurassic World. And Chocolat. Oh, that's right. He was, uh, he's Chris Pat's homie. Yes, he's the homie. Oh, snap. He's Bishop in X-Men. All right, I got to stop. Yeah, I'm just super excited. I love James Samuel. Lakeith is a really good actor. Omar Sy, he's dope too. I don't know what it's about. I don't care. I'm going to watch it. Cinema, cinema, cinema. No clown work. Call James Samuel. We got a cinema on our hands. You're going to call James Samuel about himself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to do. <laughs> Yo, James, I heard you got some cinema. Good looking out, bro. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. That is the news. We did it. Jesus, we talk so much. We talk so much. All the time. Yeah, that's the episode. Audience, thanks for listening. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for vibing, you know? Just, just being you. Crown Digital, thank you for putting us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That's Brandon and Io. As always, to me, thank you for editing, putting us on YouTube, being my DC Comics buddy, hey. trying to the best of our ability to explain to Colin yeah. what's going on over there in the Wild West. I don't work there. I don't know. <laughs> Colin, thank you for your 10 minute take on Friends. Yeah. I forgot that was on your list. Yeah. I, I didn't know it was on there either. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I think Jordan put it on there. I think she did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank you for actually watching one of the movies we reviewed. Yeah. It it's will been very rarely do that. About two months. <laughs> I don't know what's next, but maybe I'll watch that one. We'll see. Wendell and uh, Wild. Wendell and Wild. That's on Netflix. I'll probably watch it because it requires yeah. no effort. Also, Cabinet of the Curiosities because you like horror. I will give it a try. Okay. I can't all I can ask. promise I'm going to watch all of it, but I will give it a try. I'll watch your 28-minute take or whatever you come through with that. Yeah, with that one, we'll see. <laughs> Audience, what did you think of Black Adam and The School for Good and Evil? And, you know, the hour and 55,000 minutes of news we gave you. What do you think of DC in the Wild West? Are you worried? Do you think it's going to be clown work? Should we call Yaya? Let us know in the comments or hit us on Twitter at y'all underscore different Instagram and Tumblr at creative differences podcast or facebook.com slash creative differences PC. If you want to talk to me about superhero stuff, I really like superhero stuff. That's why this episode is so long because most of it is DC news and I'm into it. Find me on Twitter and or Instagram at a king named Simba. Come talk to me about the hope for the future where they cast the Joker in the DCEU and it's Yaya Abdul-Mateen so we can do actual clown work on Twitter at Doug McGuck. It's too late for that. If you guys <laughs> want to talk to me about oh, really? my more analytical opinions about Man of Steel, you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dreamy Films. Dreamy is spelled D-R-E-E-M-I. I only want to have that conversation with you if you're not going to flame me for not thinking it's the greatest Superman movie in the world. To me, your opinions are wrong. <laughs> I know. I know. Every single one of my opinions is wrong. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Join us next week. We will be doing a review for Wendell and Wild, as we just said, and a few other things. Yep. In the meantime, if you can find Gabby, just please do that. And, like, <laughs> send her back to us. Just... She might be trapped in Condock. We don't know. So, I, we're getting worried, guys. Where's Gabby? All right. It's been different. Bye. To me. Yeah. There's a line, a particular line in a Batman episode, the animated series, where he's with Zatanna. Okay. And she says, because he says, what do you care about some leggy dame in thigh highs or fishnets? Something like that. And then she says, or did I just answer my own question? So my question for you. <laughs> I feel like I know where this is going. Is, do you just want to see Asa in fishnets? I've already seen Asa in fishnets. Wow, that is not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> Surprise, guys. It's a splash zone. We will talk about the fishnets off mic. Mike.